so let us now discuss about the at this stage probably you have a you have better idea what are the different types of bioprinting technologies available and what are the capabilities of all these different types of bioprinting technologies or bioprinters now let us discuss what should be the capability what should be the capabilities of ideal bioprinter now suppose i want to use a bioprinter what are the things that a part if a bioprinter should have that i can use it for any of my applications and so that i can freely use that bioprinter for any of my bioprinting works like right? so fast is the high degree of freedom in motion right till now we have seen that the bioprinter can bioprint in head suppose it gets to a bioprint head can move in xyz xyz all directions like right? even in case of inkjet based bioprinter also we have seen that the drop that print head can move in case of laser assisted bioprinter we have seen that the print the laser is moving on the surface right but the print head should have very high degree of freedom in motion why we suppose now mostly what happens most of the bioprinter they are very well used for printing on planar surface right so if the surface is plane then we can move the print head like this when the one layer is done the print head moves to print the print bed moves down or the print head comes down comes up one layer and then the next layer is printed again but suppose when i am thinking about translating this technology to the clinics there mostly most of the time i have to suppose i have to print directly on the wound bed so there it would not be a planar surface it can be a non planar surface if my bioprinter does suppose i want to print on this non planar surface if my bioprinter doesn't allow me to print it does if or if the printer does it doesn't have high degree of freedom then it cannot print like the non planar surface so to print in a non planar surface high degree of freedom freedom of motion is very much important so that is that is now lacking in most of the bioprinter they don't allow the printhead to rotate or to move in other non planar surface so that can that is that is the requirement for ideal bioprinter other thing is i definitely i need very high resolution and accuracy so if i can accurately print accurately print a tissue structure mimicking that native architecture or native microstructure then i need accurately accuracy of the printer and the high resolution so that i can print very fine intricate details of a particular discourse so that can be printed so high resolution and accuracy is another capability that is required the printer like now some of the printers like inkjet paste printer or uh, laser assisted bioprinting they offer high resolution but again but they where the what they do the high speed but accurately printing high resolution structure is another requirement for this ideal bioprinter then the next is the high speed motion now when i am thinking to translate this for for printing artificial tissues and organs then the print head should have very high motion or high printing capability that is another important thing because unless i have high printing the printer can take time for printing suppose a centimeter size tissue the printer can take some time to print it but by the time that tissue will be ready it will be few hours to few days it the printer can take right so but i need but but we need a printer that has very high speed motion so that the tissue printing time can be minimized and that can be faster the other thing is the printing should able should able to dispense various buying simultaneously now suppose when i am printing for this when i am trying to print a tissue structures there multicellular because all our tissue has or all our tissues have more than one type of cells it's a multicellular construct so if i want to create multicellular construct i have so i should have the capability of dispensing more different bioings like more than two types suppose i want to print three different type cell types in particular locations so i should be able to dispense three different bioings containing different different cell types simultaneously to print a multicellular construct so that is another thing so nowadays some of the printers are available print where they can and or they allow printing by different or dispense or dispense various bioings simultaneously 
other thing is ease of use now this buy printer should be user friendly the that should be less skills and knowledge required to run a buy printer otherwise what will happen we have to train people the training is one important component definitely but skill development is another major challenge right so the buy printer if any if, if it has to be adapted suppose this if there should be widespread use of buy printer then the ease of use is a definitely a common requirement for tra easily translating this buy printer the easily translating this buy printer for different applications other thing is the buy printer should have compact size why because if i use a buy printer if the size is huge then i cannot keep that inside the inside a sterile room suppose i have to for clinical translation it is required that the bio printer should be kept inside a or inside a clean room facility or gmp facility right so that the tissue printing process can be done that under the gmp right so that's why the if the bio printer is of compact size then i need very less space so i can keep that inside a inside a clean room or i said i can also keep that inside a laminar flow or biseptic cabinet right so that's why so compact size is another important thing so that it will take not take uh, big space and it can be easily be accommodated inside a biseptic cabinet now ease of sterilization now for tissue printing we know that that's an that's an aseptic process we have to maintain sterility so otherwise the tissue print by printed tissue can be contaminated all the time so that's why ease of sterilization the printer should be able to sterilize with ease so i need to need not to to do much thing for sterilization of the bio printer so that is another thing full automation capability the bio printer should be the whole process can be automated right there should be very less user intervention required so that's why the this automation some of the printers they allow is but mostly they are semi automatic they are not fully automatic so, but this, but the bio printing process should be fully automatic and the full automation capability is there other things affordability for widespread use of this bio printers this is very much important the bio printer should be affordable so that more, many of the researchers or users they can afford the printer and they can use it right versatile the bio printer should be able to but able to print different types of materials different viscosities of material different types of cells and different multicellular construct can be constant can be built with this or can be fabricated with this bio printer so this this so that that is another important the bio printer should be versatile in nature but do we have all these quality qualities in current bio printer let's see what are the limitation of this bio printer technologies current and the current scenario like what type of bio printers we have we have seen different bio printing technologies we have also seen what is the ideal capabilities of a bio printer now let us see at currently what are the different types of bio printer what, what are the limitations of these bio printers like there are limited variety of commercially available bio printers if you see there are only very few players who supply or who actually manufacture and supply this kind of bio printer there are very few right but what do we need we need different types of bio printers if there are multiple players then also the bio printers will become affordable so that is another thing another thing is the variety of bio printers are limited so we don't get different types of bio printers that is like suppose if i if we can get bio printers having capability of printing different types of materials then that can be an advantage so this different limited variety of bio commercial available bio printer that is a challenge that is a limitation now and probably in the future that can be there are many now there are many new players are coming into the market so probably we will get more and more different types of varieties of bio printers available other thing cartridge and nozzle design mostly most of the bio printer they have similar type of cartridge and similar type of nozzles but for for bio printing of a particular tissue construct what we need we need different types of nozzles we need different types of cartridges so cartridge and nozzle cartridges and nozzle design is very important for to take the bio printing technologies forward so they are probably they are probably this all these different bio printing 
manufacturer they have to invest heavily but they can come up with different types of nozzles now size and speed of bioprinters now most of the bioprinter their size is like is not very, very compact now as view of few of the bioprinters they are they are complex size is very compact but most of the bioprinter the size is an issue other thing is the speed of the bioprinter this bioprinter and the speed is limited we cannot print space tissue at a very high speed if we can if we increase the speed there are other challenges so those things are there in case of actually in case of by this bioprinter the size and speed of the bioprinter is another challenging for a challenge for limitation of the current bioprinter the limited motion of bioprinter bioprinters bioprinting the print heads as i have discussed in the last slide that this all these bioprinter they have limited motion capability they can print very well on a planar surface but suppose i want to print a non on non planar surface then the print heads should have high degree of freedom so that is lacking in the current bioprinting technologies and that probably that can be taken up in the in the when somebody develops a new bioprinting thing lack of full automation automation most of the bioprinter they don't allow full automation why because this bioprinter the process some of the process is manual and the other the printing suppose the other other some part of the process is automatic so most of the bioprinter they work in a in the semi automatic space it's not fully automated but for bioprinting if we want to remove the user intervention from this thing then the full automation capability should be there other thing is the by most of the bioprinting technologies and the bioprinters are very expensive so the high cost of the bioprinting bioprinters is a deterrent for widespread user uses or availability of this bioprinters so the cost of the paper printers that also was we was to check the cost of the bioprinting technologies should be there the other thing is this most of the bioprinter the process the resolution is not very high except for inkjet and laser assisted bioprinting the resolution is not that high with explicit based bioprinting so resolution we can that also that is also another factor that can be improved further so the resolution of the bioprinter can be also improved lack of compatible bio, bio compatible material now most of the bioprinters they we have now they can use some certain type of materials and we don't have a wide choice of materials so that is also that is also and that is also challenging because we don't have the bioink also there is a choice, limited choice of bioink available but that so that that is that is also an important limit you know, that's also one has to see look after how how we can widen the widen the choice of materials for bioprinting technology now because of all these things there is a very less progress in bioprinting and tissue engineering research most of the research and most of the research are research or research works are limited to labs lab scale or lab based and some of the things some cases like that has gone to the in vitro or in vitro studies or in vivo studies are done like uh, animal studies are done but nothing has gone to the clinical level because of this the low progress in terms of bioprinting technologies and this thing so the interest if the bioprinting technology can the technology limitation can be can be uh, addressed then definitely uh, the there can be a growth in the bioprinting and tissue engineering research as i have already mentioned that there is a very limited clinical translation of this technology so for clinical translation what do you want we want the bioprinter to be available in the hospital or in the clinics inside the hospital inside the operating room so where the, the printing tissue can be printed and directly it can be applied on the thing but this kind of bioprinting so this there is a challenge there is a till now but till now this is there is a challenge of this kind of the work where the bioprinting technology can be directly be used inside the ot and then it can be done there are few instances but still we need a widespread use of the of this bioprinting technology by printers inside the clinical inside the clinics or inside the operation theater where it can be directly be used printed this can be printed and that can be used so all these are limitation of the current bioprinting technology and there is a huge scope for development improvement of all this all these parameters so that this uh, bioprinting technology can be widely used for different tissue engineering tissue engineering and regenerative medicine research 
so with this uh, i come to the end of this lecture thank you very much for listening we'll again meet in the next lecture thank you very much